Hi everyone, Tootsie from Little Bundas here and today we are going to be making a pail liner for your dirty diapers. What I have here is two pieces of pull that I have cut about 29 inches by 29 inches square. So I have two pieces that are cut to the same size and I am going to lay them with the shiny sides together. And with those shiny signs together, I'm going to take them to my sewing machine and sew all the way around three sides. So down the side, across the bottom, and back up across, leaving the top open, of course. Excuse the cat. Okay, so I have my two squares of pull. I put them shiny side together, and I use my serger and serge them. Um, across the bottom, the bottom, across the side, the bottom, and the other side, and left the top open. If you don't have a serger, you just use your regular sewing machine, and your sewing machine won't have any trouble sewing with this side of the pole. But now, we're going to turn this bag inside out, because we want to create what's called a French seam. This is going to help this bag become really, really waterproof. So I'm just turning the bag inside out and poking out the corners. And we are going to sew the bag again. Do not surge this time. You have to sew it. If you have a walking foot, this is when you want to use it. If you don't have a walking foot, you can take tissue paper, like for wrapping gifts, and you put the tissue paper on top and sew, and it will prevent your foot from getting stuck on the stickies here. I set my machine on a really long stitch length. My machine is now at a three and a half stitch length, which is quite a bit longer than normal, and it's going to help get this pull through the machine. We've already got it stitched once, so it really doesn't matter that it's not a very tight stitch. So you want to hold the side so that the seam from the serger or whatever is right in the middle, and when I sew, I want to make sure to sew so that this is enclosed. So you don't sew right up against the edge. I am going to sew with a 3 8 inch mark. You're going to have to constantly stop and readjust so that you can pinch the seam so that things don't get funky. So you're just going to use your fingers a lot here. There we go. See, the walking foot moves from the top and the bottom, so it doesn't have any trouble with the stickiness of the pole. But if you don't have one, that's okay. A generic one's only about $20 to buy, so I would recommend it for $20. It's worth it. But otherwise, just buy some tissue paper. filming now because you don't need to see me sew this whole thing and then we'll come back. Okay, so I have sewn my French seam all the way around the two sides and the bottom. So on the inside you can see the seam, the little flap, but that's okay. And on the outside it's just a nice clean line. 
And so we are ready to start our FOE adventure. I put my regular sewing foot back on. I changed my stitch length back to 2.6. And I am going to use my three-step zigzag. On my machine, that's this one. It's got the little dot, dot, dot lines for the three-step zigzag. That is meant for sewing stretchy things. So let me change that. Okay, so for those of you that don't have a computerized machine, when I changed it to an eight, number eight stitch, it automatically changed it to a five um, zigzag width and a one and a half stitch length. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on those settings. If you don't have a computerized machine, go ahead and match those settings. And here we have our FOE. This is fold over elastic. It's really soft on one side and braided on the other. So it's really easy to tell which side's the outside and which side's the inside. And it's called fold over elastic because you just fold it over. really does not matter where you start. Just pick a side, fold the elastic over the edge. It doesn't matter if you're sewing on the outside or the inside of the pole. First thing you're going to do is just, just tack it down and then we'll take it from there. If your machine has a needle down feature so that your machine will always stop with the needle down, it's very handy. Go ahead and use that. Okay, so I am not going to pull the pole, but I am going to pull the elastic. You don't have to pull it, you know, so gosh darn tight, but give it a nice good tug. I could still pull it tighter if I wanted to, but it's almost all the way Hold. Tuck the edge of your liner into the crease and go. You want to sew so that when the machine hits the left stitch, it's as close to the edge of the pull as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and up my speed a little bit here. Tuck it in, give it a nice pull. Excuse me. See how when my machine stopped on the left side? It is very, very close to the edge of the FOE. That's what you want so that this edge doesn't try to lift up on its own.
about halfway done. Just keep going. We're nearing the end. I only have maybe four inches left before I hit where I started again. So I am going to cut the pull, or not the cup, not the pull, cut the FOE, and I'm going to trim the strings from when I started. Keep sewing like normal until I get to where that FOE needs up. Okay, now this is where they meet. So I'm going to take the FOE and tuck it under so that I do not have a raw edge. And this is where you really have to do some finagling so that you can get it to lay nicely and not have such a huge bump. You don't have to pull any more at this point. Just get it to lay nicely and then sew over. When you get to the edge, see if you can do a backward stitch just to give it a little reinforcement and then over the hump. Okay. So you can see how the FOE joins together. You can see the Three step zigzag stitch. Here we have our finished product. Nice work.